So that that's what I try to tell singles. You know, a lot of the times they think about the wedding, they think about the 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 ceremony, think about their family telling them why you haven't had kids yet. But it's a lot more to marriage than than TV and the media will like you would believe. But What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest with us today. I had a chance to meet this young lady on Twitter. You know, I love Twitter. That's my favorite social media platform. I've met some phenomenal people there. But today's guest is Christian. She's a wife. She's a mother. She's a combat veteran, podcaster, author, iconic media CEO, helping individuals build iconic marriages that thrive. You know, I'm a huge fan of healthy marriages. So I had to bring her, her on today. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Nicole Pinkston, aka Miss Pinky. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> for sure. First of all, let me say that I love what you're doing with the platform. We need more people like you. I'm oh, thank you. <laughs> please, because, you know, the whole thing with just like these dysfunctional relationships and people promoting that. And we need to combat that with more of your content, what you have. And I'm subscribed to your uh, subscriber list as well. So I. Oh, see OK. Content. Yes. Oh, amazing. You're an icon too, then. I'm, I'm an icon. <laughs> that's, a, that's my <laughs> audience. I call you guys icons. So that's cool. So we can collab. And now I guess I'm going to subscribe to you guys. I love it that we're able to collab like that. Yes, for sure. We got to promote the healthy relationships. Uh, first of all, what inspired you to create the platform that you have now? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so... Um, Actually, I was in the political space and I was trying to combat um, politics and become a voice over there. But when you get into the political space, you end up hitting the brick wall and feeling like you're just talking to nothing. So um, her name is Coach Felicia Killings and she has the Felicia Killings um, Foundation. She is actually the CEO of the Conscious Conservative Movement, which I was the media director of that. And we were trying to do grassroots work there. But she's also a a uh, publisher and she helps people self-publish their books and she was like do you want to publish your book so I published the first one over here that's called Breaking Fear and in that we wanted to go after that book when I get, dove into my story about my miscarriage and how me and my husband had to go through that and how I brought myself back from there then after that we started talking and she was like what do you want to do after this and she has a program called The Right Conservative. And it's like a four-week program where she helps you build your online business. And I've already had a podcast. My show is Miss Pinky Thoughts on YouTube. But I wanted to do something a little different where I actually niche down mm -hmm. instead of being brought just political and just talk whatever there. And so I was like, you know, I've been married for a decade, mm -hmm. 12 years in April. And I was like, she was like, well, you know, she well, she helps single women and she helps them build themselves up. And I was like, wait a minute, you can help the single women and I can help married couples. And then we can tag team off each other. I'm actually a branch of her organization. Mm. And so if she comes across someone that's married, she sent them to me. If I come across someone single, I send them to her. And I got into this because it's a lot of toxic stuff out here. A lot of manosphere, a lot of pick me's, a lot of divestors. And I'm just like looking at this as a happily married woman, like, what is happening? What is going on? And, and God is like, maybe you can help them. And I'm like, me? Oh, no, no, no. And then the way coach works, she's also a lifestyle coach. She's like, she don't like hearing no. <laughs> so she'll put, like, she'll push you and start doing that. So that's how this came to be. And, you know, I didn't want to just create another generic marriage space. And I like yours because you you want people to be able to remarry, which my husband, this is his second marriage, but my first. Mm -hmm. So technically he would be one of your clients. But um, I wanted people to realize that um, we're not just going to give you advice and tra la la. We're going to actually help you build the type of marriages that have you as happy as I am. In the second book, I wrote Iconic, and that's where the name came from for my organization, Iconic Media. And I attack the media part because like we're doing a podcast right now. I want us to actually, like you said, come back and start talking about these exact topics that 
people are talking about, but no, you need another option. You need somebody to say something different, you know, and I like what you're doing because you're a man. A lot of the times it's a lot of us women marriage coaches out there. So I thought it was kind of cool. And I, that's why I started retweeting your stuff to my audience to let them know that it's not just coming from me. There's guys saying what, what I'm saying too. So, you know, that's how that happened. It was a long, a long little winding story. I'm sorry if it sounded long winded, but that's how I got to iconic media. And I just been messing with different things to try to figure out. I started with an app and then I went to the newsletter and then now God has got it going. And that's how we, Mm. Yeah. yeah because you have a, a pretty you got a nice size twitter following i love the content that you post there you you ask very intriguing questions the, and a lot of times i retweet it because i'm like well shoot i need to jump in on this and sometimes i just like to see the comments yes i also <laughs> cannot take credit for this and coach is gonna be like because she i told her and she retweeted it and I told her that she's going to be dropped a lot because she uh, taught me that right now. And I know we're going to get into it a little later. I'm working on more content. I want to have so much content that people cannot say there's no one talking about this stuff. And she's she's a teacher by profession. She was in the school system and she said, you have to ask higher level questions. You know, like a level one question is just how did you meet your spouse? But level two is what attracted to you to your spouse? specifically why him over everyone else so that's a deeper question than just how did y'all meet because you can meet anybody anywhere but more deeper and what I glean from the questions is that's why I call it the iconic community I'm getting feedback from you guys I'm getting feedback because like I'm I've been married for a while I don't need to worry about what's going on and so I need people to tell me how they're viewing what's happening with society and then that way I can tailor content to well, how this is how I look at it. This is what I suggest. And you take it however you take you take it and go from there. Yeah, for sure. Because one thing, and I like what you talked about as far as people giving you the questions and you can help them because you already married, right? Mm-hmm. And this is my second marriage, of course. And this is my wife's first marriage. Um, and there's a 12-year age gap between us. I'm 12 okay. years older than her. Okay. Yeah. So with her just coming out of the dating scene and then me being married and going through a divorce, she know what's going on with culture and stuff like that. So even though there's a gap, she keeps me in a loop with the younger generation. So uh, that helps us as well. There was a question I wanted to ask you about your uh, your or your course, the mindset okay. of marriage. Can you talk about that? And how do you think singles should prepare themselves before going into marriage? Okay, so for the for the course, I wanted to give people something higher level and actually give them tools to actually have a iconic marriage. So a lot of times we tell people, even on a political side, that we need two parent households. We need people to stick together. We need people to do da. But no one is telling people how to get there. No one is helping them. They say, well, your mom and daddy should have taught you. Well, no, everybody had parents that either were together or they were together, but they were fighting all the time. Or they just don't know in this age how to make it work. A lot of people say, well, grandma and grandpa stayed together forever. So how do we get there? And I'm going to give a disclaimer. My own parents are going to be 41 years married together this July. Mm -hmm. And even with that knowledge and my mom and dad being in my life, I still messed up when it came to dating. I still made really poor choices. And I'm just very blessed that God led me to my husband. But a lot of the times you are out here and you know certain things, you read the Bible, you're a Christian and or you in another religion and is something's not clicking. So I created this course as a 30 day starter course. I want to do a longer program, but we just want to introduce you to some core principles that can just help you understand that you can have a, a good marriage. You can actually do this. A lot of times you see a lot of content out there like, man, I don't even want to date anymore. I've seen some TikToks with guys like, I don't even want to deal with this. Well, it's some things that you you can know, like, for example, you can have a vision for your marriage. You can have a mission statement for your family, things like that. A lot of people don't even know that kind of stuff exists. So I created this course as something for people who are either in the dating scene or and want to know, or people who are in their marriage, but it's stagnated and they don't know what's really going on or what's the missing pieces, or people who want to refresh their marriage. They might have been married as long as me and and they want to just see what I'm doing and they want to just jump in. 
-hmm. So that's why I created the iconic formula for marriage success. So icon iconic is an educational place too. We're not just a blogger and just, you know, talking. We actually giving helping you actually get to the types of marriages that actually are happy and thrive. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your second question was about um, singles and why they should consider marriage. Yeah. I always say that you be you're actually a wife and husband before you meet your spouse. Okay. So like the Bible says, if a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. He doesn't say he a man finds a girl. If a man finds a sister, if a man finds a woman, that means there are certain traits in you that already make you ready for marriage. You just end up hooking up with the right person and people like yourself and my husband who have had marriage before. They just, I would just say you hooked up with the wrong one. Mm -hmm. They might be married to somebody else and they doing great, you know? So um, for a single people, I say work on yourself first. Mm -hmm. And then if you're a woman, you're not really supposed to be out here looking for that man. The man finds the wife. Mm -hmm. For men, you need to be working on your vision. You need to be working on your purpose. You need to be working on your leadership. And those things will track you in certain spaces where you will be around your wife. You know, so like Boaz was, didn't go nowhere. Ruth came to him. So, <laughs> and Ruth had to be working first. So that that's what I try to tell singles. You know, a lot of the times, they think about the wedding. They think about the, the the ceremony. Think about their family telling them why you haven't had kids yet. But it's a lot more to marriage than than TV and the media will like you believe. But you can still have a good one. Mm -hmm. I agree. What are your thoughts on? Because I see this a lot on social media, um, and I don't know. Maybe people capping. I don't know. But <laughs> What do you say to people who is like, I can't find healthy relationships and, you know, there's so much drama and dysfunction. It's easier to gravitate towards that opposed to healthy relationships because I can never find one. Well, a lot of times people believe healthy relationships and stuff like that is boring. So a lot of times they gravitate to the drama and stuff because they like that excitement. They say they don't like it, but deep down inside, like I was young once I was going to the club. I did things. So I understand. But are those the type of atmospheres that is actually going to get you where you need to be when you're trying to build generational wealth? You're trying to have a lasting, you know, destiny. You're trying to have a purpose. Not really. You don't see me going there now, but I did when I was young. So a lot of people say they don't have healthy, see healthy relationships. Would they know one when they see one? Because that's how I got into some toxic ones, because I didn't know, you know, that certain traits in certain people can be red flags. I didn't even know a red flag was a thing I should have been looking for, you know. So a lot of times people say they can't find healthy relationships. I go, where are you looking? You know, who are you hanging around? Like, I always tell married people they should be around other married people, even married people who are more seasoned than them. And that's how they get information. You know, a lot of times if you're single and you hang with a bunch of single people, Y'all all single, so <laughs> he's not really going to meet anything. And then try something different. I'm from Maryland. My husband's from Georgia. If I stayed in Maryland and never joined the military, for example, I'd have never met him. So sometimes just changing your environment. I know your story. Y'all was, you know, in two different places. So sometimes your spouse is not where you are. And you might need to change careers. You might need to do something with yourself. Go to the gym and you might be there. I don't know. But a lot of times when people say they're not out there, it's because these relationships are rare and they're supposed to be. Your one person is out of a billion people. So yeah, you gonna it's gonna take some dig and, and you want to dig. You want that person to be your person. So yeah, it's gonna be hard to find that. But don't don't settle. Yeah. You can do bad by yourself. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, don't settle. For sure, for sure. I ask, whenever I have men on the show, I ask men, what are the biggest mistakes you see men make in relationships? So I do the same thing with women. So from what you have seen in coaching women, uh, what do you think is the biggest mistake you see women make in the dating process or even in relationships? Um, I would say the biggest mistake is we take ourselves for granted. We think we have to accept whoever is offering you know, my dad used to say that a man will go with anything or sleep with anything. So a lot of times we get excited at the first bat of the eye. Um, another mistake is we don't know what we want and we expect the man to dictate things to us. And we'll get mad at him because he don't do X, Y, Z and all of that. So we don't know what we want. And then we expect what we want 
which we don't know what that is, to just drop in our lap and yay, we got a good relationship. Um, another thing, women have too long of a list. If I followed the like traditional, he needs to be six foot six and he needs to have six figures, I would not be married. My husband and me are the exact same height. He's five seven. I'm five seven. You know, if he had to have a lot of money, I and him were in the same unit. We made the same thing. So <laughs> if I'm not saying if that's what you want, really, really want to pray to God that Sierra prayer for, I mean, try, but <laughs> I think sometimes our list is, you know, too long and the man that's right for you is like in your sphere, like my husband, I knew him for a while, but he was dating other people and I was dating other people. And if you would go in a time machine and tell my old self that I would be with my husband, I would probably be like, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so women, what I think women do wrong is we sell ourselves short. We overcomplicate this and we have too long lists. Mm -hmm. So you know, and you really need to actually date to see what you want. And dating is marriage are not the same thing. So a lot of people will lock themselves down and become wives and be wifely for a boyfriend or do they just see. Him. And no, this is your job interview process. You're supposed to be sorting through these men and then you start to understand what you're looking for. And that's when you know what, what you want in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And for us Christians out there, I will always go back to the to the Bible and different standards of what is love. And you can see that in people's actions and things like that. But for non-Christians and people just out here, I would say that, you know, you got to start from yourself and work out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't attach until you are whole first. Yeah, I agree. Because there's a lot of people who enter relationships, but never took the time to know what they really want. They just happy to be with another body. Yes. Yeah. They're not happy with themselves, so they need something there to distract them from their own things. And instead of taking that time to build themselves up, so when they attach them to someone, they bring in additional to them. I say a relationship is interdependent, not codependent, mm -hmm. meaning you need them to lift you up. No, we're both lifting a couch together. Like, we're both working together to lift up our kids. Mm -hmm. So... Like I'm doing a podcast and my husband's doing his own thing somewhere else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. No, for sure. Because I think it's easier to, when you take the time to work on yourself and to know what you want and then be able to sort through the dating process. It just makes it easier because you're like, no, nah, this date. Nope. This, yeah. Right. I'm nope, yep. nope, 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 mm -hmm. nope. And it's okay. Because a lot of times people think that if I let him go, I might not find. Yes. You got to have enough faith in God. And, and this is what I tell Christians from a Christian perspective. Know that only God can be your everything. Like there's so many people that want their significant other to be their everything. That's that's a mm -hmm. unfair burden. No man or woman can carry alone. You know, that's a that's a heck of a cross to carry to try to be. Ooh, you know, I hope you don't think I'm his everything. I might not <laughs> make it next year. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Yeah, right. Ooh. And 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 that that's a burden that no no one can carry because they they supposed to make you happy. They're supposed to do this. They supposed to, and this is just like, can you show some grace? People can't make you happy. Happiness and emotions are a choice. Okay? You have to choose to be happy. Like in my book, the first page, I said we choose to be happy. You know, it's a decision that I'm going to have this great marriage and we are going to work towards that. You know, a lot of people look for their spouse to make and and I, how do you make happy? I even tell my son is like, mommy, I want to make you happy. I'm saying, baby, you can't make me happy. That's my choice. You do it. You do what you need to do. So that way you can learn what you need to learn. You know, that's a misnomer. You know, if you're going to get married for your spouse to make you happy, you're going to have a hard time um, at this. <laughs> no, I totally agree because I, I was married 15 years before this marriage. Yeah. And I learned a lot because I tell people you only fail if you didn't learn anything from it. I learned a lot from my, my first marriage. I knew where I went wrong and I look at myself and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I was. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff I needed to work on because I married at 24. I married as a kid. So. Oh. It's not so much an age thing. I think it's just 
doing the work. And a lot of people don't want to do that because it's scary to say I'm overweight and I need to lose weight or I'm abrasive and I need to slow my roll and choose my words better mm-hmm. or um, I am too career oriented and I don't know how to balance my time. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's not saying that you're that you're not good or you're a bad person. It's just understanding what it is this life has for you and what do you have to offer uh, someone else in that life and what can you do? A lot of people also move in marriage like a single person. Mm-hmm. Like they they just t- two single people and they come together, but they still two single people, you know, <laughs> and that's where the, the head button is is. Um, coming from Mm -hmm. so i don't think it's so much because i married at 26 so i wasn't too much older yeah but because i'm life i was in the military so i feel like our lifestyle in the military is a little bit more faster and you have to grow up a lot lot faster because you're doing war and all this stuff that you have to take a step back and remember you a person (laughs) you put your career first and you lose yourself a bit and then i think a lot of people do that around that age because that's when you first leave home you finally are seeing if the world is what your parents told you it was and you trying to figure out where you fit in it and all of this and if you just jump marriage right on top of that it's like oh no hold up yeah (laughs) wait a minute Mm -hmm. so i do think somebody can marry at 19 and be you know on the right path if they like i said have the tools and they understand themselves and know the purpose of of their marriage Mm -hmm. No, I agree because there are some advantages even marrying younger. And I know statistically people marry older mm-hmm. in today's culture because a lot of times they're more career oriented, you know, their jobs and there's just so much going on. Because I think men marry at 30 and women maybe like 28 now, statistically. Mm-hmm. So back in the day, people was marrying at 19, 20, you know. That was my mm-hmm. parents, 19 and 20. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking of your parents. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? It t- it taught me never to give up on a person. I know that who they are now in their like later elder years are not the people they were, even the people I knew growing up. Meaning they changed over time, they grew, they got degrees, they raised kids, their kids are raising kids now. But I've seen even through their fighting, even through their love story, um, that they never gave up on each other. Like there is a time when they actually did was getting ready to break up and divorce and it was about to be over. And it's so lovey dovey. But they came back and realized they couldn't live life without each other for the little things, you know, like the way my mom cooked certain things for my dad or the way he did tell his jokes, you know, so they didn't give up on each other. And they dealing with like medical issues and the grandbabies and traveling. So just seeing their lifetime of love and in action and not just in words taught me that it was possible. Like people have to believe marriage is possible before they even do anything towards a good marriage. Mm, I love that. Beautiful story. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> this this question, there is no right or wrong answer. Okay. So whatever works for you. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? For me personally, it's someone else, but people will say that's because you're a cancer and (laughs) that's what y'all do. (laughs) But for me, I feel like I can just pour so much into my husband and my kids. And then for me, it's like, uh oh, he has to actually tell me, you know, go take a break or go sit down, you know, and I, that's just my personality. I don't know if it's anybody else's. And I'm just and like even when I did the politics and I didn't want to do that anymore, I ended up doing iconic because I want to serve people. I was in the military. So I feel like service and helping others is just me, mm-hmm. you know, um, even one of my uh, classes in my course is about self-love and I'm struggling with it because I have to be honest and I try to teach with honesty and real life stories. And so. Yeah, I have to be honest. So God would strike me down. <laughs> but yeah, so for me, that's it, it. Just comes easier to love others than than myself. Yeah, no, yeah. There's no right or wrong answer. I, I mm-hmm. just think it's a, a great question. It is a good question. I might steal it for Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. Well, Miss Pinky, I want to acknowledge you first of all for serving our country. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for stepping out in faith and starting the business and wanting to be a voice 
for marriages um, and even from a, a biblical perspective, right? Because I'm I'm Christian as well. So uh, got to put the Lord on it, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just want to acknowledge you for, just for continuing to do what you do um, for marriages, for relationships and being that beacon of light for people because we need you for today's culture because you never know how Im- impactful your ministry can be five, 10 years from now, you know, from you just sowing seeds now. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. Uh, Miss Pinky, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Oh, um, you can go over to my Twitter, which is M-R-S-P-I-N-K-S-T-O-N-8-5. Mrs. Pinkston is my last name. You also can check us out over at Mrs. Pink, uh, Miss Pinky Thoughts.substack.com. That's where the iconic newsletter is. And you can just go from there. Mm. All right. Um, I just have one more thing. Okay. If you want to register for our e-course that's coming soon, um, you can go to gogetfunding.com slash iconic. It's just a $100 uh, registration fee and we'll start in June. Mm. Okay. All right, Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Miss Pinky and everything that she has going on with the business. I only bring the best on a scary to me, Mary. So make sure that you check out her content. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video with someone because you never know what people are going through. Uh, I get DMs all the time. It's social media, one thing, and in the DM is something totally different. You're like, I had no idea you was dealing with that. So make sure you share this video with someone. If you aren't able to watch this, maybe you do a lot of traveling, you can listen to this via podcast and subscribe there as well. Leave a rating and review. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Mrs. Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brave Hearts community, take care. <laughs>